Hello friends, welcome to another vlog. I am taking a break from the Hogwarts Express project right this second. <sighs> because it's time, friends. It is time for the great reshelving of 2020 to happen. I have received a book in the mail and it has tipped me over the point of I can't handle how much crap is on the corner of my desk here. So it's time. Let me show you what I did get. In this beautiful box, which comes with this fashion plate, oh my god, this dress, and on this side this, is this book. And I got it super cheap. I got it for like 20 bucks. <laughs> because someone who's an idiot <laughs> tore out two pages, and you can see them poking out right here, of this book, and then put them back in. So I have all the pages. There are just two that aren't attached. So this book, which goes for a lot of money actually on eBay, Mm, was decidedly cheaper because this is what it looks like on the inside. Let me just do this little flip through for you. So anyway, I figured I can do my reshelve. I have to like move some shelves around. Do all that and then maybe kind of look at my books and make sure that I don't want to like remove any of uh, you guys know I'm in that blue one, right? <laughs> um, I'll remove any books that I think I don't want anymore for whatever reason. And then I will reshelve them. But also if there's any... Oh my god, that blue one that I just passed. Oh, apparently I like blue dresses. Anything that I don't want, I will remove and then I will reshelve. And if I find anything that's super awesome, I will go ahead and do a flip through of it for you. I mean, <laughs> I can't believe I got this book for 20 bucks. It's ridiculous. I think it's, is it 1870 to 1920? Or is it, I don't have to look. Rolling back towards Regency. That one. I kind of really want that. Look at those sleeves. That's ridiculous. What year is this? 1819. <sighs> like, I, I know I don't like 1830s sleeves and I don't like 1890 sleeves, but those ones, heck yeah, I like them. And I like those weird sleeves that were in on the Victorian dress in that magazine the other day, the delineator. Anyway, this book is magnificent. What year are we at? We're at 1810. This might just go to 1800. Nope, 1799. 1787. But done in 1912, I guess. Is that what you guys are getting from that? That's what I get. I, I'm here for this. Everybody, when I flipped through the book the other day and said I should just do book flip through videos, people were like, please do that. So, eh, this might be, this might be the book flip through video you guys were looking for. So, anyway, I am going to, ugh, every time, I think they didn't really even open this very much because every time I open, open it or shut it, it makes that noise. Okay, I don't really know how I'm about to do this. I kind of actually want to make, so I have such a bad idea. I want to make this shelf right here go up one hole, so boop, here, because I have a whole bunch of books that are like this size, and that could that could be there. So that means I would still have to take off all of these books and move this one up one, which would make this one, I think, big enough. I have a, whole, I have a lot of books that are this size, so I need to make a shelf for that size thing, and this is slightly too small for that, so... I, I really have no idea how this is going to go or what my plan is. I, I don't have a plan, guys. <laughs> so, wish me luck here. This is for the, the very small books. But I do like that shelf. I think it's great. It's perfect size. So, I'm going to clean off my table here, which is currently a disaster. And then make room to put books on. And then figure out what I'm going to do from there. By the way, I fully acknowledge that this is not going to be the video for everyone. Because there's some of you out there who maybe can't... Let someone else load the dishwasher because it's not done their way. 
<laughs> I acknowledge that this is going to make some of you crazy because I'm not doing it in any logical way. I'm doing it entirely by size. I have a friend who sorts all of his books by color and I am like, dude, that's sadistic. Like, mm -mm. But I'm kind of doing the same things. I have to do it by size. So the sort of logical order that they're in right now isn't going to be how it's going to be. Although I will try to sort of theme them on the shelf, but it is going to be what it is. So if you are a person who really needs me to alpha by author these or alpha by title these, you should go somewhere else <laughs> because I can't. So yeah. Also, I don't always know the author. So. Mm. Okay, the reason I just got frustrated was because that middle bar underneath the big set of books cannot be moved. Cool. That blows all of my plans out of the water. Like, it is structural there. Structurally there? Maybe I'll just do, I'm going to take everything back off and then put bigger books up top, move all those smaller books, and maybe I'm going to move that down, so we'll see.
Okay, so I have it done. I'm gonna take you on a little tour. I know we've done a bookshelf tour before, but it can't hurt again. And then I'm gonna show you why I think my friends are nuts. They recommend three particular books every time someone asks what a new person to costuming should buy. And I have always thought those are not the books that I would get. In fact, those are not even the books that I use even yet. And I have been sewing for a long freaking time. So I'll tell you kind of what like style book I would get, but then also I'll show you why I think they're crazy. All right, top shelf books. Okay, so we start here with a ticket to the Hogwarts Express. <laughs> this book, you can barely see, is a book that was handmade for me by my best friend and it has little pages in it that she made and she wrote all the things she loves about me in it. So that is definitely always going to be my favorite book. Why it's in here, I don't know. All right, so uh, top shelf books include any book that is small enough to fit on the top shelf. <laughs> Legitimately, yeah. Okay, so these are the all about books. I love these books. They are all about each one of Cotton Silk Wool Weave and you can see that. And they have swatches in them and they tell you about each material and the weave in that material. Household Sewing with Home Dressmaking. I don't know about this book too much. I haven't actually read it yet. This is the Bertha Banner book. Um, uh, Bernadette Banner talks about this book quite a bit, so it is on my shelf to read. Uh, these books here are, this is my swatch book of all the fabrics I own. It has to be updated soon though, it's kind of a mess. Um, corsets and shoes, complete guide to sewing, reader's digest version. A lot of people recommend this book and I am about to recommend it to you. Needlework for student teachers is like, um, a book from, I want to say like the 30s. It's interesting teaches you lots of stitchy stuff. Having old knowledge is as good as having new knowledge. <laughs> uh, Nancy Nearing wrote this book about ribbon trims. It's actually wonderful. Um, it shows you how to make lots of different trims. This one is called Victorian Fashion. It's a cute little book. Um, I'm just gonna slide through here some cosplay magazine stuff. That's fun. Cosplay book. Authentic Victorian dressmaking techniques is awesome if you're into Victorian dressmaking. <laughs> These are the American Duchess books um, written by Abby and Lauren. Um, Harry Potter, no, the other one, Fantastic Beasts. Random free book, I might get rid of this one, I'm not sure. 50 Heirloom Buttons to Make is a great book if you want to make like death head buttons and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's intense. Uh, dressmaker's book, Shelter and Clothing, is something that Kathy recommended. It's super cute. I do enjoy it. Um, hand sewing, stitches, and their uses. This is written by Penny River Costuming Jess. You can get that, I think, on her site. Um, embroidery. This is a knitting guide. This is a wig styling book that I got. That I think I got on... I want to say it was one of those Kickstarter things, so this book is entirely about death head buttons. So that's the top shelf. Alright, this is my second shelf. I need some book nooks bad now. Man, I got holes all over the place. But that's good because it means I have the liberty to buy almost any size book. Even I can fit another one on this shelf, I just need to take one of these and move it down, which I totally can. Here's my organizational structure for these which isn't going to really make sense to anybody, but it's since they're done by size, this is how it is. These are inspirational books that are just, except this is like a Cirque du Soleil book, but it's still inspirational for, for like cosplay kind of costuming, including this one. These are like how-to books of different things all the way up to, I want to say like here, and then these are fashion platey books. So these are great. <laughs> like. All of these are good. We have a lot of Victorian dressmaking. The Mode and Costume is a book I found on eBay for a couple bucks and I was super into it. Candace Kling is another ribbon worker. She does really cool ribbon work. I have a cruel embroidery. This book, The Art of Manipulating Fabric, is excellent. The Geometry of Hand Showing I've actually flipped through on this channel before. This book has a couple of corset patterns that are very interesting. This is my friend Sarai's book. This is a book we're going to talk talk about in just a minute because people 
suggest this one all the time to beginners and I'm like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Modern Needlecraft is also an old timey book that has some, some great stuff in it. Uh, this is a, a designer. These are, you know, Russian clothing. Um, this, The London Look, is actually a really cool book. It has lots of, like, streetwear stuff in it. Hats, bonnets, stuff like that. Alexander McQueen, 400 Years of Fashion is also a really great book. These are the big books. <laughs> These books are all inspirational. They're all big coffee table picture books. I love all of them. The only exceptions are these, which are also something we're going to talk about, which is patterns of fashion. And for anyone who's sad about that bend that's happening in there, as far, I know that Bernadette goes off about how these books are supposed to be open and on the table and in, you know what? Shut up, Janet Arnold. Like, I actually hate that mentality because it's not ever going to be always on the table. That's ridiculous, especially with so many of them. That's just stupid and kind of rude for her to make these books in this shape. Like, I, that's the one thing about them that I'm actually kind of angry about. And I don't subscribe to the they shouldn't be on the shelf thing. Like, sometimes look at all these books. I can't have them all on my table. So Jenna Arnold can suck it. <laughs> Controversial opinion number 43 in this. Okay, so here's just a bunch of Cirque du Soleil books. Um, I've talked about these Star Wars books before and shown them. This book is entirely on Dracula and the dresses from Dracula. The Harry Potter page to screen has all the Harry Potter costumes in it. The House of Worth book is a House of Worth book, so if you like Worth dresses, that's the one for you. I am not a huge fan of Worth dresses. I think parts of them are really cool, though. So uh, This is another McQueen um, book, and I really like Alexander McQueen as a designer, so that's why he's around a lot. Mm, this one is the Wicked book, although it ha doesn't have enough of the pictures of the actual costumes to make me happy, quite frankly. All of these are just really good picture books. Charles James, I've shown this Game of Thrones book. Go buy this book. Here's Savage Beauty by Alexander McQueen. Um, black in fashion, which is sadly not about black fashion designers, it's about the color black. Um, these Tauchin books called Fashion um, from the Kyoto Institute are amazing. The 18th to 20th century book is just phenomenal. The, um, actually, they are both 18th to 20th century, but I think one of them has like 18th century and one has 19th and 20th maybe. I have to look at that. This is the book um, I just showed you guys, and these are two Disney books. <sighs> this book let me down. A lot of people were fine with it. I expected more out of this costuming book from Disney. I did show it one time. All right, third shelf down is Overflow, which will allow some of these smaller books from the, medium, or from the large shelf to come down to here if they need to. This has largely fashion plate books, and another book we're about to talk about. Costume close-up. Um, these are notebooks that I've gotten from Costume College, so they have <laughs> class notes. I really need to go through this and like organize it. Um, this is a fabric swatch book which has just different kinds of swatches, so when you don't know what something looks or feels like, you can just look it up. All of these books are fashion plate books, and I got them all at either, I think I got them all at Lucy's anyway. There's four volumes of hats for Victorian. This is what I'm saying. I need a book nook. Four, four volume of dresses. Um, there's turn of the century fashion. There's the masquerade and carnival costumes. There's another fancy dress one. Stuff like that. I actually kind of wonder if these two are the same book. I should look at that. If so, I can... Do a giveaway with one of them for my Patreon. So, of course, I'm going to have to figure out some stabilization technique here. All right, let's drop down. This is the, like, small-medium section. This one is great because it has... This, I think, is Kendra's book on 18th century wig styling. Um, an umbrella and parasol book. There is some wig books up, the, up top, too. There is... The Sewing Bible 
couple other like sewing fitting books. Here's another wig styling book. I think I also got this book from a Kickstarter. These two Cosplay in America books I know I got on Kickstarter because those are from my friend Ejin. He made a book which I think is super awesome. This is the book from the Fashion Museum in Bath. Um, this is another book we should talk about which is Costume and Detail. Those are great books. All of the books I'm pulling out are amazing books. They are just not what I would suggest to beginners. <laughs> um, these are just more inspirational books. These are Time Life books. I got these from my grandma. These are amazing because they're all fabric covered. So that each one of them has a different fabric on them. And each one of them talks about a different aspect of sewing or a different type of material, basically. These are the Singer collection of similar kinds of books. These are mostly like how to sew, independent of costuming books. And then I just have some magazines over here and my sketchbooks, which I think I've shown before. Okay, as I alluded to earlier, my buddies will all suggest these books to people if they ask, what are the costuming books I simply must have? What are the things I should buy if I'm a beginner? And I am just like, what? <laughs> like, you should not give those to beginners. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I still can't do half the things in these books. Like, what? No, that would intimidate the crap out of me. So I do not suggest these for beginners. I do suggest them for intermediate to advanced people who are looking to level up. Or if you're a late beginner learning, looking to go to intermediate, these are better for that. If you are a beginner, 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 what I would actually suggest is you get one of those books at the bottom, <laughs> which are books about like how to sew in general. Like they teach you words like seam allowance and what to do with that. <laughs> These are things that have to do with sewing as a fundamental, not costuming itself. And I definitely think that you should start with a book like that and then go to like YouTube <laughs> to learn a whole bunch of other things and basically spend a bunch of time trying stuff, learning like manually on the job with your hands before you invest in books like this because one these books are expensive and you want to make sure that you like sewing so if you're a beginner 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 why would you buy this stuff like just don't I don't I I disagree <laughs> once you have figured out that you like sewing and you want to make costumes and you've made a couple things with patterns or you've draped a few things or you pattern drafted if you draft at the beginning I'm you're a goddess and you should buy these books but <laughs> the reason that I don't think you should buy these books at the beginning is because you have to pattern draft with them and there's no construction instructions in most of them and you have to figure out a lot of stuff for yourself there I mean there are hints towards these things like patterns of fashion will go through a little bit of construction stuff with you but like it really thinks that you have experience sewing before you're going to use these. So let me show you these books because people always want to know what's in them so that they can figure out if they actually want to buy them or not. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little walkthrough of these books for you so you can see <laughs> if these, if you are ready for these kinds of books. Because a lot of times people are like, buy patterns of fashion and people are just like, oh okay. And then they go buy them and they get them and they're like, oh my god, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> so let me show you what you're getting into and you can make decisions for yourself about whether or not you want these books with some actual knowledge of what's in them. Okay, let's start with costume in detail. This is from 1730 to 1930. It has a lot of stuff in it. It is a thick book. It is also full of just like sketchy information and when I say sketchy information I don't mean it's dubious I mean it's full of sketches and notes in cursive so if you can't figure out like what back opening to here means what is that mid butt crack like if you're not advanced enough of a sewer if you're still figuring out your sewing machine how are you supposed to use this book is my question <laughs> like honestly this book is for people who know what they're doing flat out because it's just showing you the shapes of the dress. So let me do a little flip through for you. There are no patterns in this book. This book is exactly what it says. It's costumes in detail. They're giving you the details of costumes that they have found that weren't costumes, that were actually people's clothing. <laughs> so they're showing you stuff like that. <laughs> Width, all around hem, 150 inches. So they're giving you that information. You have to know how to split the whole skirt into 150 inches in the way that you want. If you don't know how to do that yet because you're an absolute beginner and you're just trying to figure out your sewing machine, 
this is not the book for you. The whole book is sketches. It'll give you lots and lots of ideas. I do think it's really great for that. I think it's great for gleaning little insights that you may have gone like, oh, to, or figuring out what the name of an outfit is called, a different kind of dress maybe. It's really good for looking at how stuff is styled because it shows you like that one has like a hat and stuff on the corner. Let's you know that how things should look on the body, but all in sketch form. And it doesn't teach you how to make anything. So if you are a new to costuming person, not a thing I would suggest. The whole book is like this, guys. There are some beautiful dresses in here. Don't get me wrong. I think this is a great book to own. And I absolutely would own this book. In fact, coincidentally, I do. <laughs> but this is not for the faint of heart. I can't believe people say to own this from the get-go if you're a beginner. First of all, it's just too expensive. And second of all, it doesn't have any construction information in it. Even I only rotate in here to like get ideas every now and then or to look at different fabric types or maybe some trim or something like that on specific dresses, but it's a beautiful book. It's an absolutely stunning book. If you are a middle of the road costumer in your skill set, I would definitely get this book to start leveling up. So that is what it looks like. Hopefully that gives you a good feeling of it. This book is slightly better. It's costume close up, 1750 to 1790. So it is very specific. If you are into these years, this is a great book. This book does have patterns. You do have to draft them. And they show you a pattern to a specific size. So you have to know how to size your own clothing. And if you don't, if you're a super beginner, you don't know that. <laughs> so again, not something I would say... A beginner should have but if you are again a medium costumer let's just call everybody medium you're, you're ready to level up you think you've got this you're ready to try and draft patterns my beef with this book is hard though my beef is you see how there's measurements there they're in centimeters that's okay I'm not that stressed out the bottom ones are in inches the problem is there's no grid so you're getting a basic shape here but like this isn't being you can't draft off this like you would literally have to draw in another inch marker up top and then draw the grid on here manually so that you could figure out where all the points are i don't use this book for patterning frankly because i, I i'm intolerant to that crap like i know but <laughs> it does have some beautiful costumes in it it's great for inspiration if you just need to know how to make a cap or a tucker or, you know, some some hose. It's a good thing to have. This, this is an excellent resource. Don't get me wrong. I think it's awesome. But unless you want to sit there and draw out a grid <laughs> or blow this up in order to do so, this is not a beginner book. <laughs> I don't know why they say these books are for beginners. No. No, they are not. I remember I remember being eight. And let me just tell you, I also talk to people all the time who are new to costuming and they say, like, where do I start? And I'm like, dude, look at YouTube. It's free. Here we are with Nora Waugh. This is a very infamous, famous book, The Cut of Woman's Clothes. It's also a great book. It's from 1600 to 1930. So we're going even farther back, which is fantastic. I have some similar beefs to costuming and close up in that they don't have grids. Uh, this book is structured a little bit differently where notes on costuming diagrams. So there's notes from stuff. There are a lot of drawings. There's a lot of this type of pattern in here where they, they'll teach, tell you how long from A to B is in inches maybe but you have to make sure that you have the curve right and stuff like that. You can see here. It's a lot about shapes. 
So again, we have patterns with no grid, so you have to figure out your own grid. And this one doesn't even have a grid going horizontally, it only goes vertically, so enjoy yourself. <laughs> This one does have some really great resources in the, the pictures it has, but it also has a lot of um, first-hand like, notations that people have made on the costumes, um, a lot more text detailing on, like, these are quotations from contemporary sources, so, like, people talking from the period about what, how, what they designed or what they were intending with their gown or whatever. So, again, this is not a beginner book. It just isn't. The Keystone Guide has patterns very similar to this, although I think the Keystone Guide has a lot more um, instruction in it than these do. These books are fantastic if you're a mid-range costumer or dressmaker because you're going to be able to read the text and get a lot of information out of that. And eventually you will get to the point where you'll be able to look at this and go, oh, okay. And figure it out but this is not a beginner costuming book either it's beautiful it's inspirational it's educational but it is not a book for beginners okay let's look at patterns of fashion I have one two and five I think is that right one, two, and five, yeah, because the three and four are not in my area of interest. So, Patterns of Fashion 1 is um, English women's dress from 1660 to 1860. I am more in this realm. I like this book more, so I'm, I'm in here more. Um, these books are a lot more thorough. They do have a grid. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Uh, most of the time they try to have a grid, but there are times when they don't, but there's a lot more notes on it and they give you a lot more information like here you can see the pleating marking and stuff like that. These these patterns of fashion books, if you have to get any of these books, I would get patterns of fashion in your particular area of interest. I still don't think this is a beginner book because I don't think as a very be new beginner to costuming most people are ready to just draft patterns immediately and be able to size up to their size and figure all that out. Like I think you need to practice <laughs> with regular patterns or draping or whatever so that you can figure out how if you have something that is made for a 22 inch waist and you have a 35 inch waist how you deal with that. So. I wouldn't recommend these for, for new customers either, but I do think they're lovely. Like, look at that, shimmy sets. <sighs> they're so gorgeous. And I would say the patterns are significantly better in here, so I will give it up to Janet Arnold and her stupid, stupid way <laughs> that she shaped her books. They are lovely on a table, though. I mean, there is that, right? Like, this is a book that stays open. You can see here, it's fantastic for that. It's also a book she intends to stay on your table all the time, but girlfriend, you need to take a little humble pill. Your book is not the only book. So, also, sometimes my fabric needs to go on my table. So, anyway. This is my rant video. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. I should just title it that. This is my rant video. Okay, that's Patterns of Fashion 1. Here's my baby. This one goes from 1860 to that level of detail of information and you have an actual grid which is thankful <laughs> so here we are in 1890s 1880s I 
And these are all patterns. All of these books have patterns that are taken from extant garments. So these are actual garments that they are showing you. The amount of work that goes into, ugh, Merja made this dress and it's absolutely stunning. Anyway, this book, these books, definitely better. Oh, I'll show you five real quick. This is the newest edition. This one was written with um, Jenny of the School of Historical Dress and Luca spearheading it. Bernadette did work on this video. This video. Bernadette did work on this book um, and it was inspired by notes and patterns and things that Jen and Arnold had already done some of and then they completed the work I think is what happened but it's a much thicker book. <laughs> it's in color so that's cool. Um, this one, by the way, is Bodies, Stays, Hoops, and Rumps from 1595 to 1795. So if you want some stays or some butt, this is some Marie Antoinette Penier. This is the way to be. It's absolutely gorgeous. Again, stunning book. Absolutely recommended for a, a, a middle customer. Should I say middling? I hate that word. I hate it. <laughs> but if you are in middle of the road, learning, wanting to, to level up a little bit, these are the books to come. You can also just study these books. You don't even have to make stuff out of the pattern. You will get a lot out of just reading these books. I know that there are people who do get these books and be able to immediately sew from them. Those people might have a 22 inch waist. <laughs> uh, those people also might be kind of exceptional. I'm looking at you Bernadette. <laughs> um, but most people I know would have a hard time, especially right out the gate, learning how to make clothing out of these books. They are absolutely stunning though. I love that this one is in color. Just sigh here for a little bit. So anyway, if you are into hoops, stays, all that kind of stuff, number five is your book. I know they're working on six right now. Well, they were before lockdown. I don't know what is happening with six now. Also, Patterns of fashion is really hard to find. Five is easy to find because the School of Historical Dress sells it specifically. The copyright for one, two, three, and four has just reverted to the School of Historical Dress, but they need to find or get together with the publisher in order to reprint one, two, three, four so that they can sell them themselves. Because whoever was the publisher is no longer publishing the book. So these guys are actually really hard to find at this point or they're very very expensive. If you just wait, like just hold, the School of Historical Dress will be publishing them again and selling them. We just need to, you know, <laughs> get that done in a pandemic. So give them a little bit of time if you are a person who's interested in these books. All right, now that you've heard my rant about why those are not the books for you <laughs> if you're a new 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 person. If you are a new new person and you think I'm completely wrong and you think you can give it a go out of out of one of these books, I would love to see you create costumes and then be like Nina Noel, I did it. Like feel free to call me out <laughs> on Instagram or whatever and tell me that I'm wrong about this. Okay, books that I might suggest for you at the beginning. This Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Sewing, it will in fact teach you to sew. <laughs> Just hands down, that's the way. Especially, you know, like, I'm talking about people who are using a sewing machine. This is the one. Like, that's a great book. Yeah, I wouldn't, this is the one I would recommend, for sure. I don't know everything about every other sewing book made, but I learned from my grandma and a book, a copy of this book, way back in the day. <laughs> so, I know it can be done to learn out of this book. This is going to teach you good sewing habits and teach you about sewing itself and not costuming. Alrighty, well, I hope you enjoyed my little rant. I hope you enjoyed my bookcase remodel. I now have room for new books of all sizes, which is very exciting. I'm kind of stressed out that they keep falling over. 
I'm gonna go downstairs and see if I have any bookends or something I can stick in between them <laughs> to hopefully keep them a little bit less folly ovary. Folly ovary, is that a new word that I just coined? Cool. Um, so <laughs> it was it was good to get this done. It needed to get done. I feel good about having more space for each size as they come and I will hopefully continue to fill up my bookshelves. <laughs> so I would love to know what you recommend to absolutely new people to sewing and what your favorite sewing books are. If you have those handy, please leave them down below. If I don't have said book, I will definitely look that up and potentially purchase it. So yeah, a lot of these books that I have, the ones that I'm I'm a big fan of are in my Amazon store. So if you ever want to look there, you totally can. There's a lot of recommended books. I will keep adding more as I come across them on Amazon. Also, if you don't want to buy them off my Amazon store, you can totally look them up yourself and not give me affiliate credit. That's totally fine. Anyway, do leave comments down below letting me know what your favorite books are because I I love getting new books. As you can see, I'm a little obsessed. <laughs> Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you later with probably another vlog. Bye, guys!